and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi Review. Now, YouTube is full of bold statements, isn't it? Normally you find them on thumbnails. Well, I don't know whether to make one here. This particular turntable, it might be the best turntable for young people on the market, for inexperienced vinyl users on the market. And the reason for that is not so much because of the turntable, although the turntable ain't bad, it's the entire package that this company from Thailand of all places, and I put emphasis on that because I'm not used to dealing with turntable manufacturers from Thailand, I have to say. There may be lots out there, I'm just not aware of them. Bangkok-based Thailand. This company, Gadhouse, well, they approached me on the internet. I'd never heard of them before. And I saw what they were doing, and I saw the turntable up close, and I'm surprised, I have to say. And I have questions to ask about the West. I have questions to ask about the hi-fi industry in the UK, in Europe, in the USA. And Gadhouse are triggering those questions. So let me tell you all about it. Where to start? Okay, well, I have to say that I've never heard of this company called Gad House, which is a different name, I have to say. An intriguing name. It sounds vaguely Victorian, I think. But never heard of them before they got in touch with me, offering it's a new turntable for review. As I've already alluded to, they're based in Bangkok in Thailand. This Gad House is a music brand, it's a lifestyle brand, it's a technology brand. Lifestyle in that all of that is mixed into one big bucket and they present the whole lot as one sort of melange, one sort of lump. And it works pretty darn well, I have to say. If you go onto their website, and I'll put a link below for what they do. I think it's pretty impressive. The front end is pretty jazzy. It's very accessible. And I can imagine a lot of vinyl beginners being sucked in to that. Now I'm going to waffle on just a little bit about the company because for this video, the company is as important as the turntable. Now, if you don't want to hear about that, and I really think you should, However, if you don't want to hear about that, click below in the description. There are some chapter headings. If you just want to go straight to the closer look section, which will be coming up in a moment anyway, and the sound quality tests, just click below. You can go straight there. But as I say, the turntable in many respects isn't the point. It is, but it's only half of it, I suppose. The company itself is as important and just as relevant for this video. So let me pontificate. Now the website itself is pretty slick. It's very accessible, as I say. And what do the company offer? Well, they offer technology. So they offer two flavors of turntable. They offer a extraordinarily lifestyle Crosley-esque turntable in a host of colors. And the intriguing thing about this turntable is how they're pushing it, how they're placing it in the, the kids' minds. Because you see this turntable placed on a flat surface, but you also see this turntable tucked under the arm, almost like it's an LP cover, almost like it's a laptop, almost as though it's being held like a tablet or some device. They're seeing it as a portable device. It's a lifestyle thing. It's not something to be, it's not something to be placed on a pedestal. I mean, I do that with my hi-fi. I'm sure you do as well. It sits on the shelf, doesn't it? To be admired. Not this. This is not how this company is pushing turntables. And with a with a if God House will forgive me, with a sort of throwaway design like a crossley, you can do that. 
The other style of turntable is this one, the Mathis, and there are two flavours. I can't recall the other one. I'll put a picture on, on this video. The other one is very sort of uh, woody. It has a very nice wood finish. It's very similar to the Mathis with one or two uh, little design differences. But it looks very similar in terms of tech. It has, it looks as though it has a heavier plinth. And because of that, pure guess, it may have an enhanced bass response. But that's pure guesswork on my terms, and it may not, but that's just my guess. This particular one, the Mathis, is the other turntable they offer. They don't just offer turntables, they offer a full suite of support accessories. Everything from tracking force gauges to little brushes to clean your stylus. They also offer a whole heap of additional lifestyle items. So they will sell record storage racks and containers, vinyl orientated furniture and shelving. They sell platter mats packed with encouraging lifestyle-esque messages, vinyl cleaning kits. They have tote bags. They have t-shirts, they have stickers with vinyl iconography all over them, and a whole lot more, but that's not all they offer. I was actually surprised to see a range of multi-camera beginners tutorials on there. For example, there's a five and a half minute tutorial video on there for this very turntable, for example, which is nice to see. You don't see that all the time on other company websites. There are other tutorials for other GAD House products on there too. More than that, there are non-product tutorials available aimed at younger vinyl users, I would say, which is great to see. They're presented by a young chap, a guy named Khan, who presents the videos in his own Thai language, of course, but for non-Thai speakers, there are English subtitles, which again is fine. As for the content, well, there's a very broad introduction to the whole world of vinyl. There are more specific videos looking at the different commercial vinyl format sizes. So he talks about 7-inch singles, 10-inch releases, and 12-inch releases. Now, you and I might take all of that as basic stuff and... Everybody knows that kind of thing. Well, no, they don't, especially if you are a youngster and you're just becoming aware of this whole thing called vinyl. So that kind of video is great to see. That particular video also looks at the different speeds that these format sizes run on. There's another video which looks at vinyl sleeves, an actual tutorial on sleeves. So. Khan will talk about single sleeves or talk about gatefolds and how they differ and why. This video looks at serial numbers. It discusses first pressings and reissues. It looks at helpful reference guides like Discogs and more. All of this is ideal fodder for beginners. And as I say, all of these videos have this shop in the background to support all of these videos. And of course, we have the branded turntables as well. So why am I harping on about Gad House and their front end? Well, because I like the company's attitude. I like the fact that they love vinyl. I like the fact that they appear to be all in, in vinyl terms, and are spending energy reaching out to young people. And I like the fact that they appear eager to educate those young people about the joys of wax. More than that, as one of those tutorial videos actually urges, Gad House wants young people to actually play the things instead of buying vinyl and sticking it on the wall as a sort of ornament. So yes, I like what the company is doing here on a broad level, and that attitude should be praised. And that attitude triggers questions as to why we're not doing that in the West. Now, maybe there are companies out there in the UK or Germany, France, Italy, the US, who are doing all of this. 
but I ain't hearing from them. They're not shouting loud enough, not loud enough for me to hear. I'm on social media every single day. I don't see them. I'm not getting press releases, and I'm signed up to a fair few companies who supply press releases to the industry. So I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing are people like Riga, who have a rather formal website aimed at mature customers, shall we say. Same with Project. Same with Clear Audio. Same with Avid. Same with Origin Live. Same with VPI. Same with, I don't know, Ellipson in France. Whoever you might want to talk to, whoever you might want to pick on. No one has given me the package. The Japanese companies, they're all the same. You look at all of these websites, they're all rather formal, they're all rather grey, they're all rather mature and grown up. Dealers, well, the dealer network are aimed at old fuddy-duddies like me. They're not aimed at young people because the young people are really not visiting dealers. They see them as a place where more knowledgeable people visit, shall we say. Younger people are online. Younger people are buying online. They're not buying on the high streets, not for turntables, because it can be a bit imposing. It can be a bit scary. You go into a dealer, you can... F I mean, I felt this when I, was a, when I was a kid going into a dealer. It can be an imposing place. You're surrounded by all these experts and all this kit. It can be scary. So what Gadhouse is doing is supply... Is, well, they're sort of supplying a one-stop shop. I don't see Audio Technica offering. I mean, it does some. It offers some very nice advisory articles. There's Audio Technica and some support materials, but it's very corporate. Still, it's very chrome. It's very aluminium in its presentation. It's not jazzy and friendly, and you know, it's not short and witty and snappy and colourful. None of that. You don't see that with any corporate hi-fi company. Like I say, you don't get that from Riga or Project, the two biggest selling branded turntable companies in the UK and in many parts of the world, I might add. Why? Why? I sometimes despair of the hi-fi industry. I just don't think we get it. I still think the hi-fi industry, it took us long enough to get out of the 70s and the 80s. I still think we're in the 80s and 90s in terms of retail presence and marketing awareness and the connection between the techie side and the customer. The future of hi-fi, the future of vinyl, the bit of the hi-fi industry I am passionate about, resides with the young, as does everything else on this planet. But I'm talking about vinyl for now. So the future of vinyl and the existence, the ongoing existence of vinyl, depends on the young. You've got to get them in. You've got to drag them in somehow. And Gadhouse is doing it. Gadhouse is doing it in Thailand. Why isn't somebody doing this in the UK? And if you are, where are you? Why aren't you shouting at me? Why aren't you telling me? The same with America. I'm not hearing of anyone in the US who's giving me this package. I want a one-stop shop aimed at kids. I want to see that. Anyway, enough of the soapbox, but that's part of this review. So the review has already started. I'm sure there'll be people out there who will say to me, oh, get on with this. Why don't you get to the point? This is the point. <laughs> this is the point. The turntable is less of the point. What the company is doing with the turntable, that is the point of this video. That's the point of this product. So, thumbs up to Gadhouse for their attitude and for their energy and for trying. Now, I'm sure they're not perfect. I'm sure if you and I, all of you and me, we got around a big table, had lots of beer and sandwiches, I'm sure we could be picky and we could pick holes in what Gadhouse is doing or not doing. Well, at least they're having a go. At least they're getting in there. At least they're, as I say, they're all in and they're having a go. They're trying which is more than can be said for the majority of the hi-fi industry, at least from what I see in the West.
get to the metal and the MDF, let's talk about the packaging and the box, shall we? This is important because well, when you buy a Mathis, you buy direct from the company. So you're looking for good delivery service with good packaging. Why direct? Well, it helps to keep the price down. If you're not including a distributor, if you're not including a dealer, and both of those people will want a cut of the action, you're helping to cut the price down. But you're relying on the quality of your postal service. You're relying on the quality of your packaging because, at least in my case, this turntable moved from Thailand to the UK, which is quite a distance, and all kinds of things can happen in between, of course. So I was eager to see the results of that. Now, yes, of course, the company is supplying me a potential reviewer, so you could get cynical about this and say that, well, of course, they'll try extra hard to do things right. Well, in my experience, I found that in general terms, if a company has issues, I find that those issues tend to poke through no matter who you are. Because, well, if you do have issues as a company, you just can't help yourself. And I didn't see any issues here, though. On that basis, I was impressed by the delivery speed. Now, I didn't time the delivery exactly, but somewhere between one and two weeks. And there it was. The box and the packaging, well, they were both solid and arranged well. There were no floaty parts threatening damage to other parts in here. Everything was buttoned down and survived in an A1 condition, while the actual box itself, well, that presented itself in a perfect shape. In fact, the box itself was surrounded by further bubble wrap to give additional protection. Once inside the box, I was happy to see that positive attitude I mentioned earlier. It continued in the box. I had to smile at the inclusion of a doorknob hanger of the type you would see in a hotel. You know, you put your do not disturb sign on the outside of the door, just hanging off the doorknob there, little cardboard thing. Well, you get one of these in this package. And yes, it says do not disturb, but it says do not disturb. I'm playing vinyl. And you know what? I might actually use this thing. I also loved the low key one sided single sheet illustrated A4 setup guide, which is a simple, easy to use affair. Again, if you need more, there's also that five and a half minute tutorial video. If that's not enough, you also get a small format 20 page paper manual, which is nice to see. Too many lifestyle orientated companies tend to give you nothing more than a website link. But of course, there's the star of the show, the turntable. And let's go techie with that, shall we? And let's take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the Gad House Mathis Belt Drive Turntable. First impression, well, yes, it looks like a cheap turntable because, well, it is. But in that particular category, it's quite a decent cheap turntable. The tone arm with its fishing wire based anti skate looks like an off the shelf Chinese affair. But from that off the shelf world, it ain't that bad. Cartridge, well, that's another matter. It's an Audio Technica VM95E. That is a surprise. I was expecting something like a cheaper 3600 model. Now, the VM95E features a superior elliptical stylus tip. What I was expecting was something like a cheaper 3600 model with a conical tip, a spherical tip elsewhere on this turntable and let's look at the plinth and the near left specifically which shows a speed select switch in which you can select 33 and a third or 45 rpm and you can do that via a metal toggle switch now i almost like toggle switches more than i do vu meters so 
I do approve of that. Spinning around to the rear now, and you will find a rocker power switch. And there are the usual RCA sockets to connect this turntable to your hi-fi. Now this turntable is feature rich in terms of its lifestyle approach. That is, the Mathis arrives with a built-in phono amplifier. So you do get the option to work with that, or you can select an external model by flicking the switch on the rear. Further, there is a built-in USB port if you want to, as it were, rip your vinyl to a digital file. Finally, you also receive a built-in Bluetooth module, so you can send your vinyl sound to a Bluetooth speaker. Now, all of this might not be the best news in terms of sonic purity, or potential sonic purity, but the addition of these extras, especially Bluetooth, screams lifestyle and strengthens the focus towards that young beginner target audience, at least in vinyl terms. The clincher, though, is a feature I've yet to mention, and initially it looks like a feature which is not included and could be a problem. There is no switch to actually move the platter on the plinth. That is, unlike, say, a turntable from Audio Technica, you can't spin the platter via a plinth mounted switch. So, what do you do? Well, to move the platter at all, you pick up that tone arm and you swing it towards the vinyl, and then the platter moves. So the switch is connected internally to the actual tone arm action. Now, this action completely foxed me to begin with because I had failed to read the manual carefully enough. I actually thought the turntable was broken for a while, until I realised it was my brain that was broken, and not the turntable. So, beware of that one. The turntable feature, that is, not my brain. Actually, though. Now, this form of platter operation reminds me of how turntables used to work back in the 60s and the 70s. It's a really old-fashioned way of getting that platter to move. So yes, it's old-fashioned, and yes, it's a further strike against it in potential sonic terms, because extra high-frequency noise will be attracted by all that internal switching. However, it remains an aid to ease of use for the beginner. It removes a step. It dumps a switch off the plinth. It speeds up the task of listening to the disc itself. And on that basis alone, while I might not approve in sonic terms, I completely understand it in terms of design and the target audience. As for the plinth and the platter, well, for the plinth, that's made from a sturdy slab of MDF. In terms of the platter, well, that comes in two parts, basically. You do get a sub-platter, and that shares the belt with a separate pulley. And then over the top of those is a top platter, which at first glance looks like it's made of damped steel. But it isn't. It actually rings like a bell, and would sonically benefit, incidentally, from a damping session by the UK outfit Sound Deck. Now I'm going to put a link in the top corner of the screen, and if you're watching this on the television, I will also put it in the description. The Sound Deck platter damping service, it's a low cost service. I don't know how much is it, £30 or so? I could be wrong. Check out the video, it will tell you the price, it will tell you what the service is all about, and the sonic improvements it can bring. It's a worthy, useful, early upgrade for the Mathis. On top is a platter mat, of course, and I was happy not to see one of those cheap rubber mats. I much prefer the felt mat that Gadhaus chose for the Mathis. So that's the techie overview, but how does this thing actually sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. And 
and welcome to the sound quality tests for the Gadhaus Mathis belt drive turntable. Now to test the Gadhaus Mathis, I didn't think it fair on this turntable to go too high end. So I tried to maintain a like for like comparison and stick with its contemporaries. So I brought in a Fluence RT81, which also uses a VM95E cartridge. I do feel that the Fluence is basically aimed at the same type of vinyl user to the Mathis, so I thought that this comparison would be a valid one. I also wanted to contrast the Mathis with a different technology approach, so I also compared it to the Lenko L3809 direct drive model. In terms of music, I grabbed an original pressing of Elton John's Madman Across the Water, and I played the track Tiny Dancer, which offered a range of rock like arrangements, but also more delicate instruments. For example, there was a bank of strings at one point. First impression, well, for the Mathis, I've heard worse, much worse in fact, sometimes from big names from the hi-fi industry at this price point. This turntable, the Mathis, sounds good. It's not great, but it sounds very nice indeed. What you don't get from the Mathis in comparison to the Fluence is the same level of bass response. The RT81 gives you real impact from percussion, an organic bounce to the drum skins that adds weight to the lower frequencies. Now, that's not to say that there's no bass from the Mathis. The bass happens to be a noted feature of the RT81. Bass from the Mathis does remain good with enough character to provide a suitable foundation for any song. There's more than enough power here to drive the music forwards. It's also bass that is disciplined from the Mathis. It never encroaches onto the mid-range, which is a good thing. It never swamps the final detail. So bass on the Mathis, well, it knows its place. Again, a good thing. And on that subject, the mid-range provides a generally balanced output. Not completely, I would say. During guitar crescendos, there was a slight mid-range spike, a slight edge, an indication that there was a little bit of a loss of control, I would say. Now, this loss of control, it's not a major issue because it only happens now and again. It doesn't dominate the entire music. On the whole, the mid-range does the sort of job you would expect to hear from a turntable at this price. Treble never wows on the Mathis, but it does the basics well. Now, next up, let's have a comparison between the Mathis and the Lenko L3809. Comparing the two, I would say the Lenko offered a better transient performance. So what do I mean by that? Well, both the mids and the treble sounded clean in their presentation. Individual notes started and stopped with precision and that was down to the direct drive motor. It's also a point to emphasize when you run across low cost turntables on the market that use belt drive technology. Now, I love belt drive turntables. In fact, the best turntable in my own collection, a high end model, is a belt drive. But low end belt drive designs can struggle because they're dependent on parts quality and high tolerances. Direct drive motors on low end turntables appear to be able to cope or rather the technological deficiencies are better masked by the direct drive design. The L3809 is not especially superior in base terms to the Mathis, but there is a better focus in the upper frequencies, which doesn't mean that I dislike the upper frequencies on the Mathis. The Mathis provides a softer, slightly warmer delivery of both mids and treble. Now, you might not notice this if you just listen to the Mathis in isolation, but when you compare it to the Lenko, you can hear that slight warming effect between the Lenko and the Mathis. In effect, there's a bit of upper frequency glow from the Mathis that remains appealing and highly listenable. So what you might lose out in terms of accuracy, you gain in terms of 
atmosphere. So they are my broad points in terms of sound quality. So how, how do I conclude this review of the Gadhouse Mathis belt drive turntable? Well, allow me to give you a few closing thoughts, then we'll go through some pros and cons, and then I'll look at a rating. the price and when it comes down to it price has to be at the front of your mind if you're considering grabbing a Mathis. This turntable has a lot going for it. It's part of a vinyl loving ecosystem and that in itself is a good thing. It comes from what I can see from a good place. The packaging and the design of the turntable itself has a lot going for it. Sure, the final sound is not perfect, but for the target audience, that doesn't really matter so much. It's good enough to get you going from a standing start, that is. And that's the important thing. It's a good turntable for a beginner to get them up and running in this oddly PVC packed world of ours. Put it this way I would urge all beginners to take a close look at the Gadhouse Mathis rather than making do with a Crosley style record player. Mathis will lay the groundwork for good practice. It will be a solid first step for a vinyl future, and more than anything else, a future for vinyl as a living and breathing physical format, which is after all what vinyl fans all want. So what about those pros and cons? Now top of the pros list is the company. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to provide a service. They're trying to provide a one-stop shop. I'd like them to move onwards and upwards and keep on doing what they're doing, but more of it. As for other pros, well, I liked the packaging. It was nicely presented, well put together. Similarly, the installation support was very nice indeed. The picture-based installation sheet, the manual and the backup videos. I like all of that support. The turntable itself is relatively feature rich. Everything a young beginner might need is in there. Now, in terms of the cons on the bad column, well, as I say, I'm reviewing a package here. So I'm being slightly picky in terms of actually addressing the sonic issues here. And there are sonic issues, but I'm being a little bit picky because the package I see for this turntable is actually more important in the grand scheme of things. However, I did notice certain mid-range peaks where they were not really wanted. And in terms of the overall sound, there was a slight lack of focus, which gave a warming effect, not overly obvious warming effect, certainly when I compared it to my references, reference hardware that is, but there was a certain lack of definition, you might say. As for the rating, well, as I said at the beginning, this is a good turntable. It's not great. It does have some issues. So I'd be looking to give this turntable a 7 out of 10. Now, if you're not sure what my 7 out of 10 rating actually means, check out this link above. There's a video explaining all of that. But in brief, my 7 out of 10, I suppose that would equate to a 4 out of 5 star rating in your typical hi-fi magazine. But I'm a little bit torn about leaving it there because, as I say, this review is not just about the turntable, it's about the package. So I also want to give a rating to the company itself because they're part of that package. And I like what Gadhouse is doing here. So I am going to give them a rating all of their own and I'm going to give them an award-winning rating. They're going to get an 8 out of 10, and that means a groovy award. So congratulations to them. And I'd like to thank you for staying to the end of this video. And if I could ask you just to click down below and click the like and subscribe buttons, which helps the channel to sail through the YouTube algorithm successfully, that support would be very welcome indeed. 
Can I also ask you to check out my Patreon page? Which there are exclusive buyer's guides. They're text-based. There are also text features. There are videos over there. There's a hi-fi tour underway. I've started a Patreon preview service, so you'll see forthcoming hardware. You'll get quick insights as to what's to come later on. There's all kinds of exclusive stuff over there. Check down below. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are live chapter links to help you to navigate around the video. You'll also see links to my Facebook group and my website, which has all kinds of exclusive editorial over there as well. And there's other social media platforms down there as well. And I'm kicking around on those. I'll be back on Tuesday for Tuneful Tuesday, and I hope to see you then. And until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.